three months since my last update. I know it's a long time and that's not just for just YouTube, that's pretty much for the fork as well. So we'll start off with what you can see. I'm using two cheap action cams. That's because the GoPro once again is sent away under warranty for continually crashing and corrupting videos. It's second time, first time they said there was nothing wrong. I got it back, it was even worse, so I've sent it away again. I, it literally can't last about two or three minutes without overheating and crashing now. It's seriously, they're, they're really bad. Um, that's a Hero 7 Black. It's it, Just search the net, everyone's got the same problem. So, now that that's out of the way, you can see that the UI is a bit different. Anyone that's tried the Devel branch, 50% um, of the people would be happy and have it working perfectly like me, and 50% of the people have a nightmare and it just crashes and dies. I think I've got a fix to that. So, maybe by the time the video is out, if not very soon after, I'll have a new version out and all of those issues should be fixed and hopefully push to community. Now I want everyone to realize that there's not a big difference between what's on community and what's being driven now because Vision D hasn't been updated. Uh, other things have changed which may change the driving dynamics a little bit but for the most part there's been no major change and there's been no major push to really update. But battery like power consumption has dropped so now it's time to look serious. So in regards to um, updates, it's been very difficult as in a lot of time needed to ever keep the fork updated, to merge in all the changes with what common do because there's just so many parts of the code that I've changed. So this is now based off of Arnie's fork. What this basically means is that rather than being a one man show, it, that effort of merging in is now split between multiple other people. And that means that mergers can happen more reliably and quicker with a lot less effort. I'm never going to be trying to push the latest that's sitting on Devel or Release 2 through to everyone anymore. The main thing I want is a really reliable system that everyone can just use. Because no longer is this, you know, that happy little hack toy that, you know, you want to update every week because every week it's driving a little bit better and not killing you quite as often. Open Pilot's near on perfect, guys. It's There's no stock system out there. Well, I'll elaborate that soon. There's almost no stock system out there that compares to this. You know, it just works so damn good. And it's been working really good. So now what you really want is to keep the system reliable and not worry about an update every single day because there's just as much chance that you're going to go backwards as you are forwards at this stage. So don't get excited every time you see an update just in case it goes the wrong way and don't think that you're missing out because you're not getting an update because nothing's really changing. But having said that, you are going to be getting more updates. I've decided to keep a feature freeze until .13's completed. So this is dot 12 that you see running here. Um, once dot 13 is completely stable, which like I said, should be in the next couple of days. So hopefully by the time this video is out, it'll be out for everyone as well. That's that's going to be the new based off Arnie's fork. Uh, we're going to have everything. Now, to all those Honda, Toyota, GM people, this is still a Hyundai Kia Genesis fork only. That means you do not have the ability to use my fork if you drive one of those vehicles. Even though we're basing ourselves off of Arnie's fork, which supports all of these plus all these features, uh, there's still several critical bits of code that I change uh, in both Panda firmware as well as in the Eon, which make this just for Hyundai Kia and Genesis. It is possible to make it use universal between all makes, I'm just not going down that path at this stage. Uh, it's not. It is actually on the books that you know my fork will be compatible with other makes, but let's just put it this way: this is the brands that I'm supporting. Now, further news: videos. So obviously, I, that's what I plan to do with the fork. In regards to the videos, I've got a few things planned. Uh, we have this video. And the reason I took it on this day 
This is the one year anniversary since I bought the Kia. Well, actually it's not, it's, I think I was out by one day. It was actually the day after this it was the one year anniversary of buying the car. But that's not the one year anniversary of open pilot driving the car, which means it's not quite as important. I mean, who cares? It's just a diesel bus. So basically on its anniversary, which is going to be in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing a really, I've got a group of videos planned, which is going to be everything from, you know, comparing the stock main keep assist to open pilot. I'm going to go through some of the old videos and go through what has happened, how it's changed from the first time that I got this steering when there was only five and a half thousand kilometers on the odometer nearly a year ago to what it steers like now. After that, I uh, should be getting my Model 3. Now that's finally coming to Australia for the first time. And that means, you know, my reservation, which I've had what feels like forever, is finally going to turn into a real car. So I've got that placed, um, that order placed. I'll be doing a bit of video specifically on that. And that is, especially for the open pilot guys, going to be interesting as well, because I'm going to be concentrating effectively with the autopilot on that comparing it to open pilot we know very well that there's plenty of people in the open pilot community claiming that it is superior to autopilot and there's plenty of people out there claiming that autopilot is the best hands down who do you believe you'll find out soon enough because i will be doing some seriously in-depth comparisons on all of these types of roads that I drive on. The highways like this, the roads which are just single lane, the ones that are no lines but wide enough for two cars anyway, uh, the roads where there's no line, the only thing you go by is the edge. The edge could be grass, rock, um, sand, stones, whatever. Colors change a lot. You're gonna greatly change the difficulty. Roadworks, um, bad surfaces and of course kangaroos. I'll get everything to test the two of them out with. So we're gonna be doing some pretty detailed comparisons. So within no time of me having that vehicle, I'm going to be doing a comparison just like I did with, or going to do with uh, Lane Keep Assist versus Open Pilot. I'm gonna be doing the same with Autopilot versus Open Pilot. And we're gonna see just really how good the two of them are and how good they are. I did get full self-driving with it, so I'm not going to be handicapping it. It's going to be the best that is available to effectively us in Australia. I'm going to be doing better videos in this as well. This is just a temporary while the GoPro is gone. Uh, I'm going to be getting things set up much better than this. I'm also going to be tackling some of the safety issues and safety complaints between uh, manufacturers, the public, media, and government about, you know, effectively NAGs. And why I think NAGs are actually more dangerous than not having NAGs. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to end it here. I've got too many surprises to let on, and I'm usually too late that I don't want to go and give promises that I can't keep. So, Look forward to the future videos where very soon we're going to be doing Lane Keep versus Open Pilot and then in the near future Open Pilot versus Autopilot and we're going to be getting, because about half my kilometres is going to be done with the Kia, the other half with the Model 3, therefore we're going to be seeing a lot of Tesla videos coming up on this channel as well and obviously we're going to be aiming at how good it is as a car to drive down the road and not replicate the million of other videos out there obviously i've got a different viewpoint to what everyone else does and then i suppose there is one other thing for the first time uh the whole family is going to be going on a holiday up in queensland we're going to be doing about five thousand k's uh we're going to be getting up there pretty quick coming back pretty quick and we're going to be doing this in the model model three so for a country which has got you know in some cases 400 or 500 kilometers between charging points we're going to be seeing just how well a fully loaded model 3 in this backwards country 
how vastness actually performs and we'll see how many times I need to get towed. Hopefully zero. And yeah, if you think I'm going to be charging at every motel, well, pretty much no motel offers it. And the couple that I asked, they kind of just said no. So that means that I'm going to be stuck using just public charging points. And like I said, there's not many. So that could be a little bit interesting in the sense of how practical is an electric car for people that actually have to do big kilometers. And obviously, no one knows what's going to happen because... Um, yeah, We're in Australia, there's basically no one here. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And um, yeah, if you're interested in what I've got coming up, please subscribe. And uh, yeah, if you hit the bell, that means you'll get a notification when I get a video. You know that doesn't turn out to be spammy because I don't put up a dumb video every single day. I do a video sometimes every week, but usually every month or more. So you're not going to get spammed by my notifications. So there's no harm in hitting that bell worrying about your inbox being filled with junk. Have a good one, everyone. Keep safe and don't touch that steering wheel unless you need to.